Finally, I continue with the second part of my new rotary valve design. Haven't you seen the first part yet? Then you should watch this one first. Link in the description. Unfortunately, it broke down during the first test run on the test bench. Now let's find out what's broken and whether we can fix it. The aim is still to be able to measure the performance. The crankshaft is very difficult to turn. Not a good sign. The question is whether the crankshaft is blocked or, in the worst case, the rotary valve. We disassemble the timing belt and check the rotary valve first. I'm a bit afraid of what might come next. A huge relief. The rotary valve is not blocked. It is as good as new and can be turned almost without resistance. That's the way it has to be. This means that the engine blockage most likely has nothing to do with the new cylinder head design. Next step is now to open the crankcase and see what's broken. Oh dear, you can immediately see the metal chips in the crankcase. These are bronze colored. The only components made of bronze are the connecting rod bearings. This means that one of the two bearings must be defective. We immediately can see that the crank pin is discolored blue. This means that this bearing run too hot and we can find the bearing damage here. The bearing is seized. That's why I can't just disassemble the connecting rod off the crankshaft. For this reason, I had to use an extension to press the crank pin out of the crankshaft when it was mounted in the engine. Fortunately, I was able to remove the crank pin without damaging anything else. Now we can see where the bearing has seized. I suspect that the bearing clearance was too small and the missing oil hole caused insufficient lubrication. I always have a few bronze bearings for my engines in stock, so I was able to replace the bearing without having to make a new one first. I pressed the old one out of the titanium connecting rod and pressed the new one in. We now drill oil holes in the connecting rod to improve lubrication. This is standard on my engines. However, this engine here isn't the latest version, so this was unfortunately not yet implemented. There is always room for improvement. I always hone all flat bearings on my engines to further improve oil retention and dimensional and shape accuracy. I have a diamond honing device for my lathe on which I can do this perfectly. Of course, I also have to replace the crank pin. Fortunately, I had one in my back pocket that I could use. I took this and pressed it into the crankshaft with a guide sleeve. This also worked without any problems. Looks good, doesn't it? I then reassembled the crankshaft, including the connecting flange. The repair is now complete and we can reassemble the engine. But before we do that, we take the opportunity to have a look at the piston, cylinder liner, and rotary valve after around one hour of run. Will we see wear and abrasion marks? Let's have a look. Let's start with the cylinder liner. This one looks still outstanding. The honing marks are clearly present and you can see the burn marks in the combustion chamber area very clearly. There is also no visible burn off in the working area of the piston. Very good. The piston is also in very good condition. There are no signs of damage or burn marks on the piston skirt. There are also no marks or grooves on the sealing surfaces of the piston ring. I'm happy. Now let's take a look at the centerpiece, the rotary valve. You can clearly see the bearing point on the timing belt side. We can see slight signs of wear in the bearing area around the timing opening. We can also see slight burn marks around the opening. However, no lateral breakthroughs can be seen from the sealing surface. This meets my expectations and can be rated as good. Now let's take a look at the rotary valve liner in the cylinder head. Here you can see as well the area where the rotary valves makes contact with the sleeve. The friction surface looks normal for a plain bearing. I don't know if you can see it well in the video, but here on the center web, you can see marks or kind of nicks in radial direction. There must have been material detachment or foreign particles between the liner and the rotary valve when the engine was running. That's not good, but no cause for concern yet. I noticed something interesting about this during a test run. Let's take a look at this. Did you see what exactly happened? A large spark came out of the exhaust at high revs. It's probably a small chip that has come loose from the liner and exit the exhaust. 
leaving behind this previously visible Nix in rotary valve liner. But that's just a guess. What do you think? I don't think we can answer this question so easily. But let's not let that stop us. I have reassembled the engine and mounted it on the test bench. Now let's see if it runs again after the repair. It's running. So far, so good. But let's waste no time now. Mount the flywheel with a high-defined inertia and see what power it brings. What can I say? I can already tell that the sound was great, but the performance won't be good. The run-up time was far too long. Let's take a look at the performance diagram. We have achieved 0.23 horsepower and 0.15 newton meters of torque. The maximum speed was 15,400 RPM. This is not a good result for a model four-stroke engine with a displacement of 0.4 cubic inches. In comparison, its brother as well with a rotary valve but two independent valves achieved 0.63 horsepower at its peak. For me, that's not the end of the world. It was an idea that I wanted to test. Now I have an answer. Let's look on the bright side. Let's hear what his brother has to say to this. I would like to thank you guys with this symphony from its brother. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel.